Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to the Unfiltered Brew Blog. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use this uh, filling wand. The investment for a setup like this, uh, assuming you already have a keg and are already kegging your beer, would be just about an extra six feet of tubing, which might cost you, I don't know, about five bucks or so. And then the tap, which was about $25 as well as the distributor for the gas. And I believe this was about $15 at Home Depot. It's a relatively cheap way to bypass going straight from your fermenter into your bottles and just bottling as you need from your keg. This one specifically is for filling your uh, beer bottles or your mini kegs like this one over here. If you were gonna pour it from the fermenter to the beer bottle, you'd probably use a filling wand like this. This guy goes in here. And you would put this inside your fermenter and you would pull it straight out and fill your beer bottle with this. And uh, what this is, there's a little stop right here. So once your beer bottle, you, you would push it down and it would fill your beer bottle. And once it's full, you lift it up and the little spring will close the door again. Uh, preventing the beer from spilling out. So this is the way, the traditional way you would use uh, to fill your beer bottles if you're going straight from your fermenter. However, if you're going from your keg, it's a little bit trickier because the keg is already uh, pressurized with CO2 and once you unpressurize it by putting it into the bottle, if you were to just use your tap, then the uh, beer would foam up or it would possibly lose all its carbonation before you put your lid on. So by the time you open up your beer to show your friends how good of a beer you made, you would open it up and it will be flat as the road. Uh, so what this does is will preserve your CO2. So to see how this thing works, let's get a keg. Okay, so we got your keg and traditionally it would be hooked up to a nozzle like this so that you could just pour right from your tap to your uh, drink and enjoy it that way. Maybe this guy lives in your fridge, or maybe you have a kegerator, or just even a bucket of ice if you're taking it out somewhere. But when you want to put it into a bottle, let's see if I have a bottle around here. So when you have a bottle, if you were to pour it straight from here into here, it's going to foam up and lose all the carbonation. So by the time you put your cap on, it's no good anymore. So in order to use this guy, you're going to, there's, if you notice, there's two ends on here and a three-way valve. So one, one valve to open up this end, one valve for this end, and one area to stop it. And so on one side, you're gonna have, this connection is gonna go to your beer on the keg. So this one is just gonna tap your fresh beer that's already been carbonated. On the other side, this one is gonna go right into your CO2 tank. So this one will provide CO2 and allowing you to backfill your bottle and creating a uh, pressurized vessel so that when you transfer the beer from your keg over to your bottle it will uh, not foam up because of the pressure. Down here at the bottom you have a uh, release valve which will uh, let out all the air that would get trapped in the bottle. So when you put this in here and, and uh, there will be a rubber, rubber stopper right there. You just use any rubber stopper um, that would fit your beer bottle. You put your stopper here and you would backfill it with the CO2 and the CO2 is going to right, go down to the bottom and the air is going to get pushed up to the top. So the stopper, the release valve rather, will uh, release all the air that gets stuck at the top so you don't have any spoilation with your beer. It also acts as a way to release the CO2 pressure so that you can fill it gradually and, uh, and, and allow the transfer to happen. One thing to note is that when you have uh, created a pressure inside the bottle that's equal to the pressure inside the keg, there's not going to be any transfer because there's no pressure to move the beer. So one of the ways that you're able to do this is by releasing that valve, creating a lower pressure inside the bottle, which will then push the beer from the keg to your bottle. So let's go ahead and do it. So for me, I have two toppers. This one right here is the one that will go on the end of the wand and it will create a pressure with the bottle. So it just slides on right here. And that way when you put it inside your bottle, 
you can uh, create that, that closure so you can get pressure. And then I also have this second one, which I use for this mini kegs. So this one just spins off. And you would just put this guy right in here. This one is good for taking out to parties because maybe you don't want to lug this five gallon around. So instead you just got the little one gallon here for the party. Okay, so first thing is to take this top off. And when you put this guy on in replace of your other keg, it just goes right on the same way as your other, other tap did. You wanna make sure this guy's closed because if you don't, uh, then it will just start pouring out for you. That's really the only challenging part about this process of keeping track of where this nozzle is and which direction it is. Uh, mostly you want it to be closed if, you, if you're unsure so you don't spill out anywhere or spill gas. Uh, and then you want to make sure this is closed too. If you can uh, multitask these things then you'll be just fine. Just you got to keep an eye on that. Okay, so this guy goes straight on here. Just as the regular tap would. And then this guy's going to get connected to your CO2 tank. So let me get that set up first. Okay, so I got the CO2 tank set up. It's just set up in the way it normally would be. However, I have a four-way valve on here so that I can send CO2 to the tap one. And then secondly, I can send the other side to the other side of my keg. So this one will just set up right here like you normally would with your keg. And we can turn it on. I'm just gonna make sure that my switches are turned on, sending uh, CO2 to both the keg and to the end of the wand. Okay, so before I begin, I'm just gonna give a quick run through of how everything is set up. I have my CO2 tank, my regulator. I have a line coming from the regulator, just as I normally would. However, this one goes to a distributor. One side of the distributor is on the uh, one side of this tap and then the second side of the CO2 distributor is on the keg to give continuous pressure on, on this uh, vessel right here. And I have a tap in the keg um, which is going into the other side of this on the three-way valve. So the idea is going to be that first you're going to turn it to open up the CO2 allowing the vessel to uh, allowing the bottle to pressurize and then once it's pressurized you're going to turn it the other way and then it's going to be equal pressure, so it's not going to drain from this one yet. And what you'll do is open this one, releasing a little bit of the CO2, and this will cause that pressure to uh, bring the beer into the bottle without making it foam. This is assuming that everything's already been cleaned and sanitized. Your bottle would have been sanitized, the tap, the whole entire tap would have been sanitized as well as the lines before connecting it, uh, because you don't want any contamination or bring in any, or bring in any stray bacteria. So with the stopper on the bottle, we'll go ahead and create a little bit of pressure. And then the first thing I'm going to do is turn it this way so that I can get the CO2 to pressurize. Okay, and then you'll hear it uh, fizz out and then once it stops making, once you can hear the gas stop moving, then it will be uh, at pressure. And then at this point, all the CO2 is at the bottom and all the air is at the top. So you're going to give a uh, quick open it up. You're going to open up the valve uh, a couple of times to let the excess air out. Okay, now that the valve is purged, then we can turn this uh, side over to the beer and we should see a little bit start to come out. Okay. And then as of now, it's stopped because the pressure is equalized. So we're gonna go open up this uh, side valve again and release some of the CO2 at a slow rate, which will allow your beer to continue to fill without foaming. Now just as a, now just naturally, you are gonna get a little bit of foam at the top, once you get to the top, because of the temperature difference. So uh, we have something cold here going into something not cold here, it's gonna cause the beer to foam up just a little bit. 
However, majority of your CO2 is still gonna stay in solution uh, inside your beer. Okay, so once the beer gets to the top, you can let a little bit of the foam come out to the side so that you know that there's no excess air in there. And you'll see a little bit's coming out here. Now I can see it on the side, the level of beer is about right here. And uh, you'd want it to get up to about right here. So let's go ahead and fill it up. So now we shut off the side valve, which is to stop the flow of beer coming in. And before you pull it out, you want to make sure that you close this top valve because it's still set up to the keg. So we'll go ahead and set that to off. And then when you do take it off, you can go ahead and quickly put the cap on and then put the capper on. Uh, make sure you sanitize your capper before doing so. However, since I'm just doing this for a demonstration, I'm going to end up drinking this beer. Okay, so then the top comes off. And then this guy goes back in the sanitizer bucket until you're ready to fill the next one. And then normally you would just cap this guy right there, put your cap on, and you're good to go. I can still see that there's plenty of carbonation inside this beer, and it's still good to drink. As long as you put that cap on, you're not gonna lose any of the carbonation. Okay, and that's how you use this tap wand. I thought I would go ahead and give a tutorial about it because the one I bought didn't come with any directions. And so I had to figure out how to use this one on my own. And I hope that this can benefit you by seeing how I used it. If you like my videos, please feel free to subscribe. And thank you for watching.